What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about Scatter. Scatter is an add-on for Blender that allows you to quickly scatter things like grass and other objects on faces. It's great for making like realistic landscapes and other things like that for rendering. So in today's video, I'm gonna focus specifically on using the biomes inside of Scatter. So those are basically built-in vegetation sets that are inside of the program so that you don't have to go find your own plants or anything like that. You can just use what's built in. So today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. So Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so just as a note, you can get Scatter from the Blender Market. I will link to that in the notes down below. Note that there's two versions in here. There's a version for $45 that has a scattering tool and some assets. And there's a pro version that has a lot more scattering masks, biomes, assets, and other features. So I am currently using that pro version. So depending on which version you get, you may see uh, more or less assets in your library. You can find out more information about that um, down below um, just by kind of looking through this. But I wanted you to have the heads up that they're going to be a little bit different depending on your version. So biomes are based basically built-in assets that you can use to spread on a surface. And so let's take a look at those. So I'm going to tap the N key in order to get into Scatter. I'm going to click on this button for Biomes Manager. And we have not assigned a target yet, so it's not going to allow us to place those. Um, we can take a look at that in a second. But for right now, let's take a look at this. Just kind of look at what it has built in. And again, remember this is with the pro version, so I'm not sure exactly what this will have if you have the lighter weight version. But you can see how basically this has different built-in settings for everything, and I don't think it's gonna give us the names unless I set a target. So let's go ahead and set this plane as a target. You can see how this has names in here for your different biomes. You can see how there's grass, there's autumn biomes, um, there's different bushes and forests and other things like that as well. These are basically collections that you can spread across this face. And so the easiest way to do that is remember to set a target, but then what we can do is we can just select one of these. So let's say for example that I wanted to use this B grass 04. I'm just gonna click on it, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna place this grass on this face. And notice how and this is going to take a while to work. And the reason it's going to take a while to work is because it's spreading a ton of different instances of that object on here. And notice how what this did is this basically timed out. So what it did is it counted the number of particles that were being placed, and it's saying that our particle count limit has been exceeded. So if you remember, Scatter has security actions that you can set to limit the amount of geometry that's created, because otherwise you risk creating way too much geometry and your computer will just crash, which is obviously not what we want, right? So if we look at this a little bit closer, let's drag this window out of the way for a second, you can see how this is placing an individual blade of grass for each one of these objects. Well, what happened is our security over here and our security actions limits us to 99,000 objects, right? So basically what this is doing is this is looking at this and saying, okay, this is gonna create too many objects right now, so we can't display all of them. So it gives us this error message right here. And so we don't necessarily want that, right? Because um, we wanna make sure that we're placing everything and we wanna make sure that we don't crash our computer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm actually gonna remove these objects using the tweaking function. So what we wanna do instead is we wanna bring this in using the proxy system, right? Because we want this to load on our rendering, but we don't need to show all of the geometry um, until we render it out. So what we wanna do is we wanna go up here and click on the proxy. So when you click on the proxy, what that's gonna do is activate the LOD system on creation. So basically what that means is now if I bring this in, this is gonna bring this in, and it's still gonna give you this error message, but now if you look at what's being displayed on your screen, it's not displaying all of the individual particles, but instead it's displaying these low poly boxes. So the low poly boxes give you an indication of what's going to be shown. And so let's say that we were to toggle from material preview mode 
over into rendered mode. So if I click on this, notice how this is gonna swap out my grass geometry with my other geometry. So what that means is that means that I can see a material preview over here that's really lightweight, right? And then if I click over into rendered view, it's gonna swap out all that low poly geometry with geometry right here. So there's some other things that we need to take a look at. Right, so first thing is we need to apply a material to this face. So one of the cool things about Scatter is if you were to click in the drop down right here, click on Scatter Material, there's some built-in materials that you can apply to these faces. So for example, I could just apply this material to this face by clicking on it. So now I have a grass material in the background. So now if we were to toggle over under our rendered view like this, Go to our camera. Notice how this is kind of a green color instead of the white color that we had in there before. And so you can uh, apply multiple different biomes in here. So for example, let's say we wanted something a little bit more complex than our grass. And I'm gonna bounce this back over to material preview mode. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna remove this. So I'm gonna go to scatter. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these objects. So in my tweaking, I'm just gonna get rid of them. And what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna place a different biome in here. So let's say we wanted something that's a little bit more interesting. So let's go to our scatter biome and let's say we wanted to bring in some bushes. So we could bring in maybe this bushes 04 setting. So if I was to click on this, this is gonna bring in not only grass, but also bushes in here. And again, you wanna make sure that you've checked the box or clicked on the button for use the LOD system. But notice when you start bringing the bushes in, this gets a lot more high polygon. So you're bringing in a lot more polys in here. So you wanna make sure that you have your security set up properly. I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. Notice how now this brought in the bushes again with that LOD system. But if we were to go back to our camera like this, let's go ahead and bounce this up a little bit. Whoops. So now, if we were to switch this over to rendered view, it'll load in all of that geometry. So you can see how now we have these bushes in here instead of just the grass. And so when we look at this though, this preset has a lot of bushes. Like it's probably too many unless you're gonna be zoomed out and kind of looking down like this. So if you're gonna do something that's a little bit lower on your screen, maybe you want a few less bushes. So what you can do in order to do that is you can tap the N key. Let's go ahead and switch back into material preview mode. But you can tap the N key and you can actually adjust the number of bushes that are placed in here. So for example, you can see how this is the group that's placing the bushes, right? Well, you can click on it and then scroll down to your particles and you can drop this number. So let's say we want half of the bushes that we have right now. I can just type in a value of 250 and notice how with the selected, it's gonna reduce the number of bushes that are in here. And so you could really do this with any of these objects, so say you wanted less wild grass. In here you could click on this and you could reduce your wild, gra your wild grass from 36,000 to 18,000 in your particle settings. Well, notice how you get less of that showing up in here. So you can actually tweak each one of these by scrolling down to the tweaking function and reducing this. And if you need to work on your performance even more, you can set this where it's going to display less of them in your 3D view. So I can just take my display percentage and I can set this down so that I'm showing maybe 50% in my material view. So these are all tools that are set up in order to help your computer run faster when you're working with this. But when you actually render these out, they're gonna show up again, right? So now if we were to click over, you can see how even though we're showing 50% in our like rendered preview mode here, if we were to actually run a rendering, so if we were to render our image right here, you're gonna get twice as many of those showing up in your scene. They're gonna get loaded in in your final render. So this really kind of allows us to manage the way that our computer is handling all of this heavy geometry when we're setting this up. So I'm gonna go, back, go ahead and put these back to 100. And so let's say we wanted to add something additional to this. So let's say we wanted to add some trees in here, right? Because what we've got right now is we've got our bushes, um, we've got our grass, but I want there to be some trees in this view that I'm creating. So the way that we can do that 
So we can go into our biomes manager and click on the drop down and there's actually a scatter asset function. Well, inside of the scatter asset function, there's multiple different assets that are in here that you could use and you can scatter any of them on your surface. So let's say for example, that I wanted to scatter this right here. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna bring in these assets off to the side, right? So if we look at them and I'm gonna go ahead and move this, you can see how what this is doing right now is this is bringing these in and it's got the LOD preview version in here. So if I wanna see what the other ones look like, I can just click over to my rendered view real quick. But let's say I wanted to place some of this tree on my surface. Well, the way you would do that is just by using the standard scattering function. So this is basically an asset that we can use, but I could click on this surface and I could add an object in here. So the way that I would do that is I would click on this face and let's say I wanted to use one of the presets in here. So let's say I wanted to use maybe like a, we'll call it a small cluster of plants right now. I don't see a cluster of trees, so we'll go with this small cluster of plants. So we're just gonna click on this. That's us setting how it's going to be scattered on this face. Well, now we need to tell it what object to scatter. And so we're gonna do that by going and finding the object that we wanna scatter. So in this case, it's gonna be this tree, and we just want to click on the button for scatter. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna scatter this object along that face. And notice how because we're using the LODs, it's still getting brought in as that kind of like low poly preview geometry, which is exactly what we want. So if I tap on the zero key now, you can see how all of those trees are gonna be showing up in my rendering as well. And if I toggle over into render preview mode, you can see how those trees are getting loaded in as geometry as well. So you can use this in order to scatter those asset objects individually too. So if you don't want to just use the biomes, you want a little bit more control of your customization, you can do that using this tool. All right, so one other thing we need to pay attention to is we're really wasting a lot of processing power right now, right? Because you have a ton of stuff in here that's not showing up where our camera is actually going to be, right? Like if I hit zero to go into my camera view, I'm really only gonna render stuff inside of this view. And so what we need to do is we need to mask out the stuff that isn't in that camera view. Right, so the stuff that runs over here and over here, we don't really need because our camera is gonna be looking forward. And so this masking can be a really powerful way to help your performance. But one thing you need to be aware of, and I'm gonna go through, and I'm actually gonna turn all of these off for a second, um, just so this runs a little bit quicker. So one thing you need to do though, is this is gonna use the vertices inside of your mesh in order to do the masking. So what you need to do is you need to make sure um, within object mode, so if I tab into this, um, this needs to, you need to make sure that you have enough vertices and enough geometry in here that this can set those vertices to help mask out your object. So most of the time when you're dealing with a mesh, it's not really gonna be a problem. Since I just created a plane, you can see how I need to subdivide this a couple different times. So I'm gonna come in here, subdivide it, and just give it some more geometry, some more detail. So now, if you tab in here, notice how this mesh has a lot more detail in it. Well, now what we can do is we can go back into the scatter settings, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn these back on. And then I'm gonna create a mask. So to do that, what I wanna do is I wanna select all of these objects, right? I'm just doing a shift click so that I have them all selected. Well, then I wanna scroll down to the masks section. What the masks section is gonna do is that's gonna allow me to mask out stuff in areas where I don't want it, right? So, for this, for example, I wanna mask out all of the stuff in areas where my camera isn't seeing. And we can do a full video about masks. There's a lot of different ways to do this. But for right now, let's say that we wanted to mask out everything that isn't in our camera view. Well, we can do that just by going into create new mask. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this to, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna go with the ray casting option for right now. So when we do the ray casting option, what that's gonna do is that's gonna use our camera and it's gonna mask out everything that isn't in our camera view. And it's gonna do that by setting the faces and vertices um, so that this doesn't display stuff in those areas. So if you look at this, what this did, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna scroll down, 
we're going to click on the button for add influence to selected systems. But what this does is this actually masks everything out that isn't in our camera view. So it basically tells Scatter, hey, don't show anything where our camera is looking. So now if I type the zero key to get out of this, notice what this did is this literally masked everything out where our camera wasn't looking. So now we have maybe like half or maybe even less of the geometry that we had in there before. So now if I zoom in here, I can kind of move my camera around a little bit still. Um, if you ever want to update, there's an update button in here that you can use. Um, I'm not sure if this refresh button does the same thing. I think it does. But if I was to render this out now, so if I was to just click on render, like this, notice how you're just going to pick up that geometry that's in that section right here. So you can render out your landscapes without having a bunch of extra stuff in the background that you don't need. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. What else would you like to learn about with Scatter? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.